Our overall feeling was that the numbers this year were a little bit lower than what we've seen in, um, in the last few winters here in the Falklands. There's been a, a bumper season in Argentina uh, with right whales on the carving grounds there, so it's quite possible that a lot of the whales that would have come here have gone directly over there because um, they're seeing very big numbers this year. Knowing where whales aggregate and where they are in particular times and particular areas is super important for conservation management purposes because if you want to understand whether something's going to impact whales, the very first questions really that you're going to ask is where are they? Where's the important habitats? What time of year are they in them? And how many are there? And I mean, that's not just whales, that's pretty much all, all conservation questions boil down to that in terms of managing populations and making sure that things that happen, in this case in the sea, isn't going to reduce those populations. So one reason why we put the satellite tags on the whales is to learn more about this. And it was highlighted, it's been highlighted by quite a few conservation groups as being a priority for understanding right whales in particular because we don't know where they're feeding and we, we only have minimal information on how their success at feeding is impacting on population growth through calf survival or how frequently the females decide to have a calf. And the tracks that these whales take are, are telling us an awful lot about where they choose to go to forage, in what habitats and how that will relate to prey abundance. Part of the right whale tagging that we have been doing this year is part of a bigger project that will be going on for the next few years. And that project, uh, as well as answering questions about where the whales in the Falklands are going to and uh, their movements and their use of foraging areas, is also part of a bigger project looking at tagging and how to minimise the impacts of tags on the animals while still answering these important questions. There's another species of right whale called the North Atlantic right whale, which lives pretty much lives off the eastern seaboard of America and Canada. Once upon a time it lived across the whole North Atlantic but that species did not, has not recovered from whaling um, and part of the reason it's not recovered is they have a terrible time getting caught in fishing gear, uh, in particular lobster and crab pots uh, on the seabed, the ropes that go up to the surface buoys they get entangled in um, all the time. So it's a real massive issue for them. The population of them is only about 400 animals and they are unable to recover because of these impacts. One of the things with them as well is we want to understand more about where they're going and how they're running into these fishing gears and uh, vessel strikes, where, where this is happening. And so there's um, a need to tag those animals really um, but there's a, a strong reluctance to do so because there's so few of them uh, and they're already struggling a lot. So there's a lot of concern like if we tag these animals and, and it went badly and we lost, we lost animals as a result, that would be horrendous for a critically endangered species. And so it was decided that we would trial some tags here on southern right whales as a kind of guinea pig for the North Atlantic right whale because southern right whales, they are relatively abundant and they're doing pretty well. Um, so the tags that we're trying to put on the southern right whales um, for the next few years are smaller and thinner and we're trying to find tags that will cause the least impact on the whales while still producing the kind of data that we need for conservation. Um, so we're doing follow-up studies here in the Falklands over the short term because uh, after tagging the whales some of them will stay around for another couple of months and then once the animals arrive at Peninsula Valdez in Argentina they'll be looked at again and in that way we can monitor those animals um, for several months, maybe up to six months um, after tagging to really have a look at the impacts of the tags. So by the time we start to think about tagging the North Atlantic right whale we hope that we've got a really nice data set showing that there aren't going to be long-term consequences for those individuals that are tagged so it's a really nice project to be involved with in as much as it will change whale research going forward I think for decades to come in improving things for the animals whilst also giving the information needed for management.